Machine learning is a fundamental concept in the realm of artificial intelligence. Instead of programming computers with our bare hands, we just start a training program and tell the computer to learn what we want him to do by himself. We only have to provide training data for the computer to train on. The whole topic of machine learning is a vast and complex subject. But there is one educational app that can give your students, even the young ones, a basic understanding of how it works. A very nice application to explain the concept of machine learning is provided by Google. It's called Teachable Machine and it is available online. You can use it in the browser. Uh, you will find the links to the app in the description of this video. You don't need to uh, register any user account for this application, but uh, just to start working, we, uh, we get to the teachable machine with google.com uh, website. We click get started. And here we can create a new project. And the concept of this teachable machine is to create a machine learning model, which will perform an action for us. He will recognize some of our input. The input can be from the video camera or it can be an audio input and then it will perform some classification on it. For example, it can recognize uh, images uh, of any kinds. Uh, so we have three types of projects. We have image project, which uh, performs an action on the input from the video camera. We have audio project, which performs classification on audio signals. But the audio is not the most useful thing to do in the classroom where we have more computers, more students, quite a lot of noise. It's nice to do this on your own in your room, but um, it's in school not so much. And pose project is recognizing some uh, poses of the whole body and we need some more space for it to, to move back from the camera and um, move freely. So this is also not especially in the our uh, area of interest. Let's go on with image project. This will be the most simple one. And then we have to decide if we need a standard or embedded model. Embedded is for uh, microcontrollers and uh, microcomputers. So let's say it's the, some more advanced things that we don't, uh, we don't do right now. Let's go with the standard image model. And here we have a diagram of our teachable machine. It takes some input then perform some classification on this. Okay, I clicked the webcam button and now the input from webcam of my laptop is visible in this application and I can record some data for the computer to train on. The main goal of our model is to take some uh, video input and perform some classification. For example, I, uh, we could train the model to recognize between cats and dogs. So we would show him images of cats and dogs and uh, he would, would have to learn how to distinguish between them. Uh, I don't have too many of cats and dogs around me here, so let's do something sim simple. For example, we could recognize uh, gestures of, of my hand. I could, for example, yes, no, or left, right. Yeah, maybe uh, left, right will be useful in some other application. So let's go on with left, right. And do, what do we do to train the model is to input uh, some some data that we, he would be trained on and then we could use the model elsewhere in some other applications to, to perform more actions with it. So our first gesture will be left. I click hold to record and as you can see some of the images are captured and assigned to the first class. Class number one is the um, default name but I will rename it to left because this is the class that I call left and uh, we need something like 30, 40, 50 images, not, not that much because we'll have to then upload it into the cloud so it would take uh, time to upload more images and the images have to be consistent in the, th in the way that I'm showing him this gesture but it's good that they are not identical. Identical data is not, not a great value for him to train on. He has to have some, some different variants of this image to, uh, to work on. Okay, so this is class number one, left, and then I create class number two, I switch webcam to class two, and this one will be named uh, right. And again, I record some samples 
of my hand showing the gesture of right. Okay, I have 50 of them and already I can perform the training. The computer has enough data to, to recognize the left gesture and some data to, rec to train on the recognizing the right gesture. I click train model. It will take like something like 20-30 seconds. The images have to be uploaded to the cloud and then the model will be trained. Okay. And already you see I have a preview of my machine learning model working. There is this preview window. I see the input from my webcam again and below there is output. So the, the out output is the classification that the computer performs on the images I show him. So if I show him the gesture left, she, he recognizes that this is left. If I show him right, he recognizes that it is right. And as you can see, the recognition uh, process is not 0-1. Different uh, varying confidence. The computer declares that he detects the gesture 1 right now with 100% confidence because it's very similar to the data that he was trained on. But for example, if I just uh, like hide my face or I don't know, maybe I will show it like, like this. You see that he's less sure which gesture is it actually is and if I show right and also if it's not exactly the same as as it was before he declares that this gesture is like 70% right and <laughs> about 20% confidence that it's left so the recognition works quite nice on the gestures but if I just sit still and I'm not showing him any gesture he still recognizes this one as right and if I would upload this model to some kind of game where I would be controlling some objects with left and right gesture, it's quite inconvenient that showing nothing still is recognized as showing right. So it's always good to add some default state to our application. Like for example, I will add another class. I will call it nothing. Turn on the webcam. And here, this will be just the images of me sending still and not showing any gestures at all. So uh, the computer also sh uh, recognizes that the moment when I'm not showing any gesture. Okay, 30 images is enough. I have to retrain the model. And a few seconds later, I have new preview. Uh, and the output, as you can see now, it contains left, right and nothing. And when I just sit still, the, uh, our model recognizes it as left. When I show left, he recognizes right and, and nothing. So right now it works quite perfect, I might say. But uh, these are perfect conditions. There is white background behind me. I do not change that much in the... Uh, in the input to the camera but for example if another person would sit in my place and started showing the same gestures the computer might not recognize it at all because it, it doesn't in fact it doesn't know that I'm showing the gestures he just analyzes the whole image so if another person with different clothes and different uh, face uh, is in the picture for him it would be a totally different picture and this gesture would be not so recognizable anymore so that's the basic process of training a machine learning model to perform some kind of a classification task where he, the computer receives the input from video camera and as the output he has to declare which kind of a class he sees on the input. If it, is it a gesture left, right or no gesture at all. And of course, with this model, we could perform any other image classification action. We could re recognize animals, we, we could train the computer to recognize if we are happy or sad or angry, whatever comes to your mind, try it out. If the model doesn't work best uh, at first, try, try again, try to prepare better training data, try to retrain the model again, and hopefully you will achieve usable results. But Still, we are in the this, in this sandbox of the Teachable Machine program. We have a model that works, but it's just a proof of concept. We just see that it works. 
it would be great if we could use it somewhere else in some other application to perform something more useful with it and we can do this by exporting the model I click export model and uh, here is where we need the uh, Google account because the, the easiest way to do this is to export the model to the cloud so I just click upload my model to Google Cloud and when I did it I have uh, this link this link which I, which I can use in another application capable of using such models to perform some more useful use cases of our machine learning activity.